Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I got a review for you today. Today we're going to be talking about Image Comics Tenement, issue number one. It is written by Jeff Lemire, art by Andrea uh, Sor Sorrentino, colors by Dave Stewart, and letters by Steve Wands. Um, if you don't know, this is the third installment in the Bone Mythos um, series. I don't know. Um, as far as I can tell, it does not connect at the moment, but uh, before we get started on this review, please like, comment, subscribe, you know, hit that bell, you never know when I'm dropping videos. It's always free, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, to like, to comment, to even hit the bell, none of that, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it, right? Um, as always, the art is fantastic, and, and Andrea Sorrentino, um, <laughs> but... It, it basically starts off with this quote right here and I'll read it to you it says seven there are seven of them that much I am almost certain of and it pretty much kind of paints the picture of the story um, if you notice in the picture at the bottom of this there's an apartment building on the back cover it kind of focuses on that building and that's what we're focusing on is seven different tenants inside this uh, building and we're pretty much just getting to know them in this issue um, they they kind of show everybody right off the bat. We got this little boy that's Isaac, his mom Amanda. Um, we got a drug dealer named Justin, an old man named Felix. Um, the uh, it's a heavy metal rocker named Tanya. Um, this guy named Bob, and then a guy named Gary works at a toll booth. So it kind of and this for me was one of the more confusing panels not to break off in the review but you're supposed to read like these two together and then you read this one it's really weird because normally you would read these and then you would read that and I don't know but it, it I mean it takes a second to figure out but they kind of you kind of get it you know after that but basically they're setting up like some of the things these people are doing Amanda works in the hospital she's trying to save this dude uh, we get the drug dealer reference from this guy. We got uh, Felix and he's making copies of his apartment key and he gets some, some more copies. Um, we got Tanya and I think she's tired of rocking. We got this dude Bob and he's basically getting off of work. We got Gary and he's at work kind of thing. Um, and then we got this boy and, and he's just walking home but I will point out that he's kind of seeing stuff like in the concrete. You might not be able to make it out but there's, there's some skulls and stuff. Um, the next page we get is this this right here and it's the courtyard um, in front of the uh, I'm assuming the apartment building there are some like people hanging here and we got this guy over here which eventually stands up it turns out to be the, the drug dealer um, Justin and he basically like you know asks what the kid is doing um, and then he tells him to get the hell out of there you know kind of thing because he's yeah, I guess that's where he does his business uh, we get a spate, you know, a little splash, splash page of the um, the title. Uh, we get this dude Bob, and he's basically getting off from work, and he's he's taking care of uh, somebody. I don't know if we get the, you know, who he's taking care of. It's a family member or something like that. But he has an at-home nurse that's helping take care of this person, and he's behind on the payment for that nurse. And it's basically a conversation about like, hey, can I pay you next week? And and she does agree to. Um, the next page we get like kind of later on at night with this guy Bob, and and we learn that he's more financially, you know, in debt than than the story was leading on before because they show all these past due and final due notices kind of thing. Um, and then we kind of jump over with the drug dealer Justin and they're kind of painting a picture that he's more of just a drug dealer he's got a mom that lives at home she's not all there she basically just sits at home watching TV and smokes cigarettes um, it looks like he's doing like all the shopping taking care of her kind of thing and that that's kind of what the story is showing it's kind of showing us that he's you know more than a drug dealer kind of thing um, he gets a knock at the door which he finds weird he asks his mom to answer the door um, and we get this other character that we mentioned before, Tanya the rocker, and uh, that's what she got off, that's what she got tired of, you know, rehearsal to go try and get some drugs from this guy. He wasn't in the courtyard, so she just came up to his house because she knows where he lives. Um, this guy, he gets pretty pissed off because his mom is there and he's like, hey, don't ever do this again. Come on, man, this is my house, you know, type of thing. She ends up walking off and she ends up running into Isaac as he's getting home. Um, 
which is kind of weird because she came into the apartment complex after you know he did um, but maybe he you know did some side stuff I don't know um, so anyways um, we have the situation over here with uh, Gary and the older man Felix and Gary is claiming that he's hearing all this stuff in um, Felix's apartment it's banging and noise um, he works overnight he's mad because during the day it's a bunch of loud noises um, the old man Felix is explaining that 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 he's not doing any of the noises he don't know he doesn't understand what he's hearing you know and the guy like he even explains like I can hear it through the damn walls kind of thing as this is going on Isaac kind of walks up and he you know he, he listens and sees the whole situation eventually Gary slams the door and you know tries to go back to bed um, Felix does apologize to Isaac the little boy you know telling him he shouldn't have seen that situation there was some language used towards the old man kind of thing um, they basically greet each other telling each other's names you know hey I'm Felix hey I'm Isaac Felix mentions that he's that he's seen him around the apartment complex and at that point Isaac kind of gets a little weird out and he ends up leaving uh, Felix goes home uh, we do see that eventually at the same you know um, that Amanda his mom is already at home she got off of work um, and she beat Isaac home uh, she notices Isaac he didn't look so weird and he asked to go home you know go up to his room and she, she agrees you know just making sure he's okay we do get the scene over here as he goes into his room he's got this book on the shelf and I know it's probably hard to make up here you might be able to pause it and make it out but I'll read what I can make out of it and there's a couple lines on top but it says blood sword and then it says like Trish Reed is probably the author um, so it looks like he's into some darker reads or whatever you know kind of thing uh, we get this page as he's looking out the window and if you notice there's somebody on the top of the building um, no I'm tripping That's the, that was just a chimney it's just a chimney but somebody will be on top of the the building that's why I, I but I, I kind of jumped too early um, so we get this and it's basically like you know there it's nighttime in the building and it's what everybody's doing um, kind of thing there's not really a whole lot of significance except for Tanya and Felix Tanya was getting high and she's in this like art room and all of a sudden it's hard to make out probably but she's kind of gasping um, it's gonna play out in a second we also got this guy over here the older guy Felix and for some reason he's in his robe hopping in the bathtub kind of thing um, never good signs kind of thing so we get some other things so we um, again it's fast forwarding we got this guy over here and he's, he's you know he's looking at all his bills uh, we got the drug dealer and he's contemplating some stuff the major thing over here is Tanya and she's looking at this like sculpt sculptor you know kind of you know um, statue or I don't know what it is but some of her art kind of thing because she's sculpting it um, we got over here uh, the old man he's got the the copy of his key that he had made earlier kind of thing eventually he ends up putting it in the envelope which shown over here um, all the things I mentioned before is kind of like the same thing we got Bob he's looking at his life insurance policy for some reason Isaac slips past his mom um, again with the you know Tanya and her statue and that's the face of the statue and it's, it's basically just an empty area kind of thing um, we get this spread over here and basically there's a couple things that go down um, somebody does make it to the roof and you can see over here that it's Bob it's probably you know all the the final notices that kind of thing that's going on we have the scene over here with uh, Gary and I mentioned before he was hearing stuff in his walls well now he's looking at this this bulb over here that's buzzing a weird thing he gets a ladder and he ends up like uh, climbing up there to check it out it's shown over here um, but those are kind of the main key things eventually a you know Tanya she throws her art I mean, she gets weirded out by it um, and Justin for some reason is out in the courtyard I'm not Justin Isaac the little boy is out in the courtyard so we have all these things culminating we have like Gary and he climbs up to the light bulb and he sees that a fly is in there all of a sudden the fly starts buzzing at him and he gets weirded out and, and like as soon as it starts buzzing at him it actually breaks the the light bulb you can see it right here 
Um, they kind of show some more scenes with Bob, and he's probably contemplating the end of his life kind of thing at the top of the roof. At the same time, we also have um, Isaac, who's down at the courtyard, and he happens to look up in that direction. Tanya that is like banging the door of Justin, the drug dealer. She's, you know, been weirded out by her art, and she she needs somebody. Eventually, he does open the door, and he's like, "Hey, what's wrong?" And she grabs him in a hug, and we see that uh, Bob is getting, you know, he's he's right over the edge kind of thing. So a couple other things happen. Um, all of a sudden, an ambulance uh, comes up. We see that. The Gary falls down. Eventually, Bob ends up not jumping off the roof. He ends up, you know, running back. He claims uh, he calls out Vicky. I want to assume that's the person that's in the house, kind of thing. Um, we do find out why the ambulance was was in route. It is the old man Felix? Uh, we don't know how the ambulance was called, but somehow it looks like he passed away. Um, again, going back to the last things that we saw, he was hopping into the bathtub with his, you know robot or whatever but um, the boy kind of notices that it was uh, Felix that was being toted away by the the medics and everything and Amanda, Amanda his mom is kind of like hey what's going on um, she's like you don't need to worry about it go back to your room you know everything will be fine I'm gonna stay back and I'm gonna talk to the cops and make sure everything's on the up and up you know because she is a, a doctor or a nurse, something like that. Um, but basically, uh, you know, the little boy Isaac does head upstairs. For some reason, he has this notion to, like, once he's inside, he goes back to the front door and opens it. And once he does open it, um, there's a letter with his name on the, you know, an envelope with his letter on. Hello, I can't talk. There is an envelope with his name on it, you know, sitting there. And basically, it's that key that, that you know, Felix, the. Uh, put in the envelope. They also show this and there's been something that's been in the background and they, I want to assume it was Felix that was saying it but he keeps talking about seeing the true face of him and, and this and that and basically right here next to this fly it says and that is where he waits that is where they must go and it's like this whole like um, you know that there's like a demonic presence or something like that. I want to assume that's the tie to Tanya with her art and of course what whatever's going on with Felix um, but that is the end of this issue they do give us a cover preview to the next issue I'm assuming that's Isaac with the key um, if you do look close it is a fancy key it's not just a you know normal looking key um, it kind of has a symbol or whatever in the very back there is a letter from and Andrea Sorrento or Sorrentino um, but basically describing what Jeff and Andrea have like why they're doing this and why they're sticking to the horror genre like you know what they're kind of mashing together kind of thing um, it is a good little page read you know if you're interested but that is my review on Tenement uh, issue number one um, a couple things I do love the art I wish I wish she wouldn't focus so much on shadows when she does faces Every time you see a face, it's like they have shadows, and I get it. There's there's shadows in the real world, but I mean not all the time, um, unless you're just in a dark. I, I don't know, but that that's my one complaint about the art. I mean, other than that, the art is fantastic. Um, the writing, I have made this known that I am not a super huge fan of Jeff Lemire. He has a great way of starting stories, but for some reason that they did they just fizzle out or it, they just don't even end kind of thing and I'm hoping that this one does have a, a finite end I'm hoping it has a point to the story right now we just have seven people living in this apartment complex going through basic stuff you know um, but overall I do like it I did like it it was a great read it was an easy read I'll say that um, there, except for that one confusing page the book was pretty you know straightforward kind of thing but hey that's my review let me know your thoughts below on the bone mythos series you know in total i know i only reviewed like the first issue out of the other two and i haven't really you know i didn't want to reveal the whole story but you let me know what you're thinking about it you know are you liking this uh, you know i know there's a lot of jeff lemire fans especially you know my canadian brothers out there they love jeff lemire but i have yet to been you know one over kind of thing. I don't know. 
I'm still, he's, but he's still a top writer. I'm not saying all that. Um, but hey, that's what I got for you. Hopefully, I got some more reviews coming. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. That does help this channel a whole bunch. And I will see you guys later. Bye!